<laughs> oh. Hi, we're the Daughters of St. Paul, and we evangelize using the media. I'm Sister Bethany. I'm Sister Julie Benedicta. And I'm Sister Carly Paula. And today we're doing something a little bit different, but today we're going to have a conversation about what it's like to be a Catholic on social media. Often when we're looking at social media as Catholics, we often think about like, oh, what am I creating? What am I doing on the internet? What am I putting out? But it's a little bit more than that, in my opinion. Being a Catholic on social media is... It's about living your life as a baptized person on social media. Mm -hmm. And so it's all the elements that come with that. And you get the added benefit as of being a religious sister. You visibly live that, <laughs> whether people <laughs> want to know that or not. Yeah. When, <laughs> yeah. When any of us use social media, it's like pretty obvious, like, oh, she must be Christian. <laughs> and if you know enough, it's like, she's probably Catholic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it can seem sometimes like being a Catholic on social media means that we have to be like making posts about Jesus mm -hmm. all the time or something like that. Right. Like maybe that's what we would mean by that phrase, being a Catholic on social media. But mm -hmm. there's actually a lot more to it than just like a Jesus sticker being like, mm -hmm. boom, Christian sticker, did it, check the box. I'm a Christian on the media. Exactly. Yeah. Like I posted my Bible verse of the day. I've given mm -hmm. my reflection. Mm -hmm. And there's a time and place for that. Sure. Yeah, sure. Exactly. Especially there's when it's authentic. Right. Yes, yeah. precisely. And there's definitely times where even in my on my own social media, it's like the things that I've prayed with that day, I'm like, oh, this is something that mm -hmm. I should share. But that's not something that I'm sitting there like, oh, I must post a Bible verse every day. Right. It's about how we live our lives and the witness that we give as baptized persons. That's what makes us Christians mm -hmm. on social media, mm -hmm. right? And I feel like those moments are more effective because it, it breaks through the veneer of like, I'm a real human, I'm a real person, and this is how I'm living my life. Mm -hmm. And it's not just like a Jesus costume, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's who I, it's integrated into who I am and I can live an authentic life even more authentically because I know who I am in Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that extends to also when we interact on social media. Mm -hmm. So even the comments that we get, um, the things that we see, things that might even scandalize us as we're scrolling. But I'm thinking particularly right now about like comments and maybe rude things that get posted on my page or maybe on a page of somebody that I follow. And a lot of times when I get those things, I have to remind myself of a couple of things. Um, Wait, one, pause. Yeah. You're saying that even as a religious sister, people are not afraid to make ridiculous and rude comments. Like it's <gasps> shock. Absolutely like, not. No, if the interactions are the same. So if you're yeah. struggling with a lot of negativity or negative comments, like we are right there with you, sister, <laughs> and mm -hmm. we are praying and interceding if yeah. you are struggling with that yourself. Whether you're commenting negatively or you're a receiver on the other end, receiving negative comments, like mm -hmm. we're praying and interceding for yeah, exactly. And I think there's a couple of things you can do when you come across rude um, comments or things like that, especially as a Christian on social media, because I know the human reaction that I have is I want to come back at it with the same amount of like anger and maybe it maybe it is a witty but rude comment. And I want to come back with that same rude wit. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times what what happens or that what I have to do for myself is first pause and pray for the person on the other side of that screen. Mm -hmm. And then I need to, I take a moment for myself and I ask the Lord for the grace. And that often involves like waiting to respond, mm -hmm. whether it's five minutes, sometimes it's the next day. I need a minute to cool off. Mm -hmm. And that's in an effort to respond in charity. Because as Christians, we're always called to live charitably with our neighbors. We're called to live charitably with everyone that we meet. And that includes our interactions online. And that's a virtue we can exercise in a particular way, even in the digital platforms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And cultivate. And cultivate. Mm -hmm. And I think particularly as Daughters of St. Paul, we are called to have that burning heart of charity, like St. Paul the Apostle, who had that virtue in a particular way. Mm -hmm. And so the other thing that is included in that charity is speaking the language that they can understand. If I'm going to go in and, and like 
punch somebody in the face, they might not receive that too well. So it's a way of like, we need to develop in ourselves a way of responding that's charitable, that people can understand and people can receive. And that might actually encourage or um, it might be a moment of conversion mm -hmm. for people. Yeah, like it might actually draw them into the thing that you're trying mm -hmm. to explain or or help them to see like mm -hmm. it, it's an invitational rather than confrontational. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And neither does it mean just being like super nice all the time. Like you no, can no. you can be who you are. Yeah. But there's a way to do that with care and intention intentionality mm -hmm. that um we can develop. Yeah. Online. Exactly. Yeah. So there's love at the center of it. Yeah. So like that's that's one way to respond when we're interacting with someone mm -hmm. that we either disagree with or has been rude or has been offensive or something. But I think also the other side of that is like sometimes we just come across content that is offensive or goes contrary to, you know, how we how we try to live our lives. So like if I'm scrolling and I see something that I don't know, maybe it's a little bit pornographic or maybe it's um, maybe it's blasphemous. Maybe it's there's a lot of like really offensive stuff out there. And it's not just social media. It can happen on the street, too, you know. Mm -hmm. And so like for me, the thing that's most important is to pause and to remember that. However much that gets my blood boiling, it's still a human person on the other side of it. And it's probably a very wounded human person who is kind of acting out of a place of feeling like that's where they're going to find their value in presenting this kind of content or um, or in, in acting this kind of way. And so my immediate like telling them that they're evil or that they're bad or that they're whatever is not going to do anything. So mm -hmm. that kind of goes along with what you were saying is. The best thing probably in that moment, first of all, is to go away from it quickly. The second thing, and 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 also to train the algorithm, if you're on a platform that allows you to, to say that you're not interested in that kind of content, like go ahead and use that feature. Like maybe we need to just mention it to somebody and be like, oh my gosh, I just have these images in my head and it's it's terrible and, and I don't like it. And could you pray for me in this? Mm -hmm. And also join me in praying for the creator, for the creator of that content, because that person also needs prayers too. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. I think that really humanizes the experience. Yeah. For us. And just to say, too, like if it had continued down a negative no, track, it's like there is block. nothing wrong with blocking or muting right. or restricting accounts mm -hmm. that interact with you in an, in, a, in an inappropriate or unsafe way. Mm -hmm. There is nothing wrong with that. People will come back and try to tell you that it's unchristian or that it's uncharitable. It is not. It is proper and mm -hmm. it's good to protect your boundaries in that way. Just like you wouldn't let a stranger come like screaming in your face on the sidewalk. Bill, Bill Connors, I don't wear. <laughs> you don't need to let them do that on your account either. No exactly. block. And there are ways to filter words um, mm -hmm. on all of your social media accounts. I have dozens of different words blocked myself or like filtered myself. So I'd highly encourage Christians, Catholics, anyone who's looking to make their feed a more beautiful experience, mm -hmm. I highly recommend filtering your, your words. <laughs> Those features exist for a reason. They do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Use them. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's a really beautiful tie-in just as important to think about. And it's just as important as a Catholic Christian on social media to really like create good practices when it comes to consuming content. It might be good practice to take an intentional scroll through your For You page or your Discover page or your home page, whatever platform you're on, um, and just take some time to reflect after you scroll. Be good stewards of your time. I'll leave that up to you for discernment, but be good stewards of your time. But as you scroll, just maybe take stock of what it is that I saw today. What touched my heart? What is it that I saw today that really it can't it won't stop going through my mind? Mm -hmm. All of those kinds of things. It's really good, especially at the end of the day. But even right after you've done scrolling, like maybe make that intentional, an, an intentional part of your scrolling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, almost like an examination of conscience on what you have taught the algorithm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because really it's about like. The algorithm doesn't control you. You control the algorithm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's built for us. Like we're the ones who get to use it. And so like, let's use it. Yeah, know? it's, it's deliberately finish. trying to customize things to your taste so that you will stay. So if you're seeing a certain kind of content a lot, it's because it has learned that you will stay if it shows it to you. Right. Exactly. So, so it's like real quick, fast and in a hurry, you can grow in vice or grow in virtue, depending mm -hmm. on what you've trained the algorithm. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. 
on a couple of different platforms. I know for sure on TikTok, there is a feature where you can go into, if you go to settings and then you go to your content preferences, there is a spot where you can actually just reset your for my for, for you page. So like wipe clean your algorithm, like receive absolutely like just, just start totally, over. Yeah. Just totally reset it. Yeah. And um and so if it feels like you're kind of down that hole and like it just is a lot and it's gonna take a lot of work to retrain it, maybe just start fresh. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I guess just kind of to sum up, um, you know, like when we're baptized, we become Christians like all the way through our entire being, like there is an indelible seal of God that is placed on us. And it's, yes, it's on our soul. It's also on our bodies. Like it's our entire being that is consecrated to God. And we take that everywhere we go, whether we go there with our feet Mm -hmm. or we go there with our thumbs, we're taking it with us. Right. And so like the catechism talks about the baptized person needing to participate in the witness of holy lives and practical charity. Mm -hmm. And that holy life thing means everything about my life. And the practical charity means with every person I come in contact with. And that contact does not just need to be like IRL contact. It can be online contact. And so Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of like really where we're headed with this is just to remember like who you are and whose you are and to use these neutral tools Mm -hmm. for the good And to consecrate that all over to God with yourself. Wow, we covered a lot of ground. We really did. Yeah. Well, happy scrolling. We hope you can take some of these tips and tricks into your own social media use. Please know that the media nuns are praying for you. Remember your thumbs are consecrated and baptized. Yep. (laughs) And see you next time. Here's it. Happy scrolling. (laughs) 